Hi, I'm Shireen Garib, Deputy Director of the Washington DC International Film Festival. Thank you for joining us today. We are really pleased to feature a beautiful period piece from Finland called Helen, which is inspired by true events of the renowned Finnish painter, Helena Cherhbeck. This film directed by Antti Jokinen also features an amazing performance by Laura Bern in the starring role. I'm especially pleased that Laura Bern will be joining us from Finland in conversation with Suvi Jarvela Hogström, the cultural counselor at the Embassy of Finland in Washington, DC. I know it'll be a fascinating conversation. We're so glad that you're with us. Laura and Suvi, thank you so much for being here. Suvi, I'll let you take it away from here. Thank you and please enjoy. Thank you very much, Shirin, and warm thanks to the DC International Film Festival for, for having Helene in the program and for having this interview done as well. And um, hi, Laura, how are you over there in Finland? Hi, hi, I'm, I'm very good. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for, for having me. And yeah, I'm, I'm good. I had a busy day. I was uh, in the morning. I had I voted since we have the, the communal election in Finland this week. I had my first vaccine uh, for COVID and I feel like a proper citizen today. And then I was working after. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely a proper Finnish citizen. Yes. Yeah. And maybe a short introduction of, of Laura. So Laura Birne is really one of the most popular actresses in Finland. And she has also made an uh, international career. And uh, one of the films that we know Laura from is The Ones Below. Then there is the TV series from Netflix, Netflix The Innocents. And the most recent one for Apple TV Plus is a Skiffy series, uh, Foundation. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that as well. But now maybe to go to the, the film Helene, uh, the film about Helene Scherfbeck, one of the most famous Finnish artists and painters. Uh, she was really a genius. Uh, she received um, a scholarship to the drawing school of the, of the Finnish Art Society when she was only 11 years old. Uh, Laura, what kind of experience was it for you to play this iconic artist and, and how did you prepare for the role? Well, I... I love, I have to say, I loved every minute of it, but it wasn't like, it wasn't so easy from the beginning. Like when, when I got the part, when Antti uh, Jokinen, the director, uh, told me that she, uh, he wanted me to play Helena, I, I, I was so happy and so honored because I've loved her art for a long time since I was a kid. But then realizing I have to do it, I really have to play her. Antti was like, yeah, of course. And then you have to learn how to paint. And then I was like, okay, but... Well, she got the uh, scholarship when she was 11, but the last time I held a brush or a pen to draw in my hand was when I was like about nine years old. Because I remember <laughs> when I was a child, I remember thinking like I had these visions inside my head, but they didn't come out of my pen. And I decided that, okay, that's it. It's not for me. And I didn't do it ever since. I have two kids. I never painted with them. I just said like, no, let mommy watch and I, I'll applaud you and you do it. But Antti had no doubts that I could do it. So I got to spend six months prior to shooting with an amazing Finnish artist called Anna Retulainen in her atelier. And she would teach me how to mix colors, how to hold a brush, how to look at a painting. And, and, and more than that, we just, we talked about life. We talked about being an artist, being a painter. We talked about being a woman, a family member, everything. And she became a, a very, like a dear friend to me. And also she taught me everything about that world. I'm an artist, but it's very different to be an actor. We work in a group. We, it's always kind of a collaboration. And as a painter, you it's just you and the, the painting and the colors and, but I, but I loved it. It was it was an amazing six months. And also I read about her, about Helen Scherfbeck a lot because we have a lot of literature about her. So it was kind of like this six months. I wasn't doing anything else. I was just preparing for the part and kind of getting into the into her art and the whole art world. I I I, I really 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 enjoyed the the preparation. But I was scared. I was very scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to of course ask. Do you do you paint now? <laughs> Well, I, I and I have to tell you, I'm, I'm very proud of the paintings I did with Anna during that six months. I don't have my own atelier yet, 
but I draw, I, I'm, I'm painting with my kids. So with a six year old, I'm fine now with kind of like just, so I, I think it gave me some kind of freedom. I think why I didn't like painting or uh, drawing before was that I was kind of afraid of making mistakes or something. So I kind of, I think I, I got the freedom of not being afraid of that anymore, which is fun because I don't need to be uh, like an amazing painter, but I can enjoy and I can have fun with it. Wow, that's great to hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, having portrayed uh, Sharfbeck, uh, what's your view on how was she as an artist and, and as a woman? Well, I th my image of her changed a lot during the, the process because I think my, my image of her before was that she was kind of very fragile, even weak. She had this um, issue with her hip, so she had like a, a little like movement problems or something. And and she was very private. So she wouldn't like give many interviews or talk about her art kind of publicly. So I, my image of her was very shy and introvert and stuff. But then reading about her, learning how to watch how her paintings with Anna, I learned that she was very, very passionate, very strong. Maybe she was kind of private and she wouldn't want to kind of talk about herself all the time I mean she she would write a lot of letters letters and and then later she would ask everyone to destroy them to burn the letters because she didn't want to kind of people to know what what about her too much but luckily for us the, the not everybody uh, destroyed the letters so now we have kind of a lot of her letters which are such an interesting door to her mind and she she was very curious she was very intelligent she was, yeah, and, and very strong, like passionate, ob obsessed even with the painting. So kind of like so full of life, which you kind of not, maybe you don't understand from her, from the pictures or her kind of interviews from the beginning. But this is what Anna also taught me that when you look at her paintings, the way you can see the brush has kind of like being there, it's not something very sensitive or soft that she has done, but it's kind of like with a lot of force and life. So yeah, she was she was a, a cool woman, I have to say. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, and it's really interesting how you tell about how strong she, she actually was. Yeah. And, and as maybe for the American audience, the, the film um, takes place somewhere around 1915 to 1923. And actually, Finland became independent in, in 1917, and, and there was a civil war in, in 1918. So these were kind of uh, turbulent and also very interesting times and important times for Finland. Mm -hmm. um, Finland was one of the first countries in the world to grant women uh, full political rights in, in 1906. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but of mm -hmm. course, it probably wasn't always you know, dancing in the in the roses when you were a non-married female painter at that time. So, so can you tell us something about that? What did you learn uh, in the process of this film? Yeah, well, I I think a lot of things were expected of women and women artists at that time. Like, I think as a man artist, you could be this genius artist and still have a family and kind of be the dad and kind of like have everything. But as a woman, you kind of the atmosphere was that to be a good wife, to be a good mother, you couldn't be an artist, have that freedom and kind of, and also as an artist, if you were a woman, you couldn't, the money you earned, you needed to give to the man in your family, kind of, if it was your husband or your brother. So you kind of, it was kind of that you belong or your art or your money, they belong to the, to the men. And I feel like kind of somehow women had to, choose of course there were women artists who had family as well but somehow I feel like you had to choose between a family life or this little bit weird artist life but then you are a little bit weird character not like perfect life material so yeah it, it, it definitely wasn't easy and also in in the art world they kind of had a lot of opinions of, of what a woman can paint what they can't paint, what the style should be, what kind of uh, the topics you can have in your painting. So it was kind of like much more limited what they wanted a woman artist to be. 
but in this Sharpeg also she was very brave and she kind of she did what she wanted what she she changed her style and she painted topics that people would say like no that's not suitable for a woman so she was very ahead of her time and very strong in in kind of believing in her own way yes maybe you kind of one of one of the pioneers <laughs> so so to say as well definitely Yes. And again, the funny point also about, about like being a woman artist at that time, what we learned also because we, Krista Kosonen, who plays uh, Helen's friend in the film, who is my, my, my very dear friend in real life, and we talked about it a lot and we read about uh, a lot about their friendship and we thought about our friendship and we realized there are a lot of similarities at the same time, kind of how you talk about life, how you talk about art, you have your champagne, you go through all these kind of miseries and, and, and beautiful moments together. So kind of something in, in, in that kind of sisterhood of, of being a woman artist we found many similarities in that as well. Um, well, besides, of course, that's a very one of the key key relationship in in this in this film, the friendship between Helena mm. and and Vester, as, as I as I think the name of yeah. the Vista's character, and and yeah. of course, then there is also the the kind of the core of the film, the romantic relationship with uh, Einar, but also I, th I found the the Helena's complex relationship with her mother also really interesting so can you describe that a little bit to us yeah I think Sharpbeck herself wrote in many letters that kind of her mother expected her to be kind of like her mother didn't appreciate always her art or her being an artist that much but she wanted her to do the home chores all, all the time, like do the dishes, kind of take care, like, be a proper woman, like do what a woman has to do. And and Sharbek uh, suffered a lot from that. But at the same time, she lived together with her mother. And I think the, the relationship was very, very close and kind of needy as well. They were partners and companions because they lived together like until, until the death of her mother. But it was kind of this very complex relationship of not being able to let go of each other but at the same time being really kind of I don't know finding the the like soft spots of each other and kind of pushing there and the mother also like cherished the brother over her very often and said that you should go and, and the mother felt also that that Helen should give her money to the brother and kind of so it was it wasn't an easy relationship, but at the same time, I feel there was something beautiful in the way they needed and they stuck together. They were the the first persons to each other the whole time, and and they she Helen Sherbert could have decided that I'm not, I'm gonna go. I don't I'm not gonna be with you. I'm not gonna live with you. But she decided to be with her mother. A mother is a mother, even though it can be very complicated. Yes, de definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then she lived so many years with her mother. And yeah. And so of course there was lots of lots of love, even though <laughs> it's it's can be sometimes complicated. Yes, I yeah. understand that. Yes. Um, well, is is there something that you think that we could learn from this film or or take with us, so to say? I usually want to be careful with what I tell people what they how they should see the film or watch the film because I think it's uh, I, I would love to give the freedom to everybody to see take what they see from there so so if I give some like direction then maybe they will miss their own points that they would see without my directions but maybe I can tell what what I personally kind of what I learned from her but and I think it has something to do with the kind of the courage and strength she has said that you as an artist but i think this goes to being a person as well but you can't follow anyone else's path you, you the only truth is in your own heart and you have to be true to that like you have to be brave and listen to that truth and i think that for me that was something so beautiful kind of because she went against all odds like she did she didn't follow any route that's given for every every woman or every artist but she followed her own path and I hope to carry some of that courage I hope we all would carry some of that courage with us to kind of really listen to our own truth inside us what's right what what we believe in what we love what gets us kind of 
I don't know, super excited, even though somebody else would say like, no, maybe it would be better you to, for you to de- take that path. So uh, that was something very inspiring for me about her. Well, yeah, that's a big, I think that's a really big lesson for, for, for everybody to, to yeah. kind of remember to, to follow one's own, own path. It's a good, good take on the film for sure, for, for all of us. Uh, okay, Laura, maybe one final question for you, of course, uh, to, to maybe learn about what is, what is your next dream or, or who, would, would, who would you like to portray next? Who would I like to portray? Uh, that is, oh, uh, I don't know who I, I, sh- I would like to portray, but I'm, I'm thinking that maybe, yeah. If I have to, if I had to choose someone, I don't know. I don't think I would be the right person to to portray her. But for example, Pirko Saise, who plays my mother in the film, who is a famous writer also in Finland and has had a, a very interesting life, and she's been very active in in many fields of culture and politics and kind of like this general opinion. So I think I would love to see a film about her, but I don't think I'm not sure if I would be the right character to play her. But yeah. And my my dreams, I don't know. I think I I dream I dream about working with from people from different cultures, different backgrounds. I love kind of getting these new kind of challenges for me. But I I'm I'm easy on that that I get excited very easily. So I'm not I'm not very kind of specific. But I only want to play this or that. I get excited easily. But okay, maybe I love more than anything. I love dancing. So maybe one proper dance film in my life before I'm, I'm too old to lift my legs. So I would be happy about that. <laughs> well, that sounds really nice. We are looking forward to seeing that dance movie starring Laura Birn. <laughs> well, but I'd like to really, again, thank you, Laura, for, for being here and, and giving your insights to the film and, and your dreams as well. Yeah. And obviously as well, again, thank you for DC International Film Festival um, and enjoy the film, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.